Hello, I'm Britt, creator of The Style Shaker, your guide to cleaner, greener beauty, skincare, and beyond. I try products out for you and share my honest reviews so you have a better idea of what to buy and, of course, what potentially not to buy. Today, I'm talking all about the new Fit Glow Good Lash Mascara, the new little brush. I've been excited to try this out. It used to be one of my favorites, so is it still? If you've been eyeing this mascara and thinking about buying it, before you do, check out this review. Here we go. I'm gonna run through the scorecard. Five questions, one final answer. Answers the question, would I buy this again? Would I recommend it to a friend? If you find reviews like this helpful and you want to keep seeing more of them, take two seconds to hit that like button. It makes a huge difference over here. Thank you, thank you, thank you. All right, let's kick it off with question numero uno over here. It's all about ingredients. Check out the disclaimer that's on the screen right now so I don't have to say it over and over again because for my subscribers, thank you. You're probably sick of me talking about how I am not a cosmetic chemist. I'm just a wannabe cosmetic chemist. When it comes to this $38 mascara, yes, it's up there. I didn't see any major red flags for ingredients. I saw a lot of organic, certified organic ingredients up front. This is meant to be a quote three in one product so it is mascara serum and lash conditioner so fit glow beauty is known for having skincare plus makeup there is horsetail plant it is not off a horse's tail FYI, it's a plant there's more on this on the scorecard post back on the site you can dive into the details but overall that's supposed to be helpful supporting hair growth yada 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 it is at the very bottom of the list other than that I'm not seeing anything major to call out next up application the claim is that it's supposed to give a sky high lift sky high has new curl brush technology. So I'm gonna show you what this brush looks like. The old brush looked more like an acorn shape and you could really get into corners. This brush, one part of it's curved and then the other part of it is just straight. The straight part has softer bristles. The curved part has a little bit more rigid bristles that you can use to comb. Thing. I didn't see any clumps while applying. It is the type of formula where, I mean, some people could call it tubing maybe, but it has small fibers and it was the same way in the previous formula. I like those primarily because they give a feathery sort of volume. And I like to give mascara a week or so to try. I've tried this for two weeks. Usually after about a couple of days of opening the container and closing it and getting oxygen in there, you'll see a little bit of a difference in application. With the straight side of the brush, I wasn't able to get a ton onto the lashes. It just was kind of sad for me. But then when it came to the curved side of the brush, I was able to comb lashes up and that is where I actually saw more of the formula deposited on the lashes. My opinion, I miss the old brush. I really do, I miss the old brush. Felt like it just deposited more product and gave me more oomph quickly as opposed to the current kind of hybrid model. Got a three out of five for application. Hello, volume. It's supposed to amplify volume. As we know, this is why we use mascara. I need the volume. I want the volume. I want it. Yes, I did see volume, like I mentioned, with the straight part. I didn't see much. It was very fine, like slight. Wow. When I used the curved part, that's when I really started seeing more volume. It's a softer feathery volume. It's exactly like how it was. It just didn't have a lot of the product depositing. It did amplify volume. You could see a difference in volume. It's easy to build. This is one of the formulas that's really super easy to build. I don't technically know why, I couldn't tell you, but I've tried a lot of mascaras and the ones that come off in small fibers, when you're just taking it off, you can see that. Those tend to be a little bit more flexible. This isn't the kind of mascara you put on, it dries down and gets kind of crackly and you can't really build on top of that. Not wet, it's not dry, it's kind of in the middle, but it's got a very different texture compared to the smoother, silkier formulas. Not a bad thing. I gave it a three out of five again on the scorecard. Length, length and lift. This is supposed to provide that sky high lift, real high, big lift, curl boosting brush, all the things, but does it do it? Yes, I saw lengthening. Yes, I saw a little bit of lift, but I didn't see the flip that I sometimes see in other types of mascaras. I'll talk about other options in a minute towards the end of the video. I, I saw it, I just, would I say it was outstanding or that it was the key differentiator for this mascara? Not for me, it did have an impact. I don't wanna say it didn't lengthen. I was just expecting to be wowed and I guess I wasn't. If they really weren't touting that sky high claim, if it wasn't a part of the marketing claims and prevalent in the copy on the product pages, then I probably would have been a little bit easier on the rating here. But as a result of that, I was expecting Sky High Lip. I was expecting the, ooh, did not get that. 
It received a two out of five on the scorecard, which is harsh, I know. So I might change it down the line, but for now it's a two out of five. Sometimes you just gotta set those boundaries. <laughs> and finally, the wear test. Same as last time, it did a really good job. It held up throughout the day. I test for a couple of days. This case, I tested for two weeks. Eight hours is usually when I start looking at it by the end of the day. I saw a few little flakes, a few little flakes. You know, I forgot to mention when I first started getting used to this brush, a lot of the time when I would apply and kind of wiggle it onto the lash, it would hit my top lid. It was transferring quite a bit, which was driving me nuts. I've gotten a little better, but for me, there's a learning curve. I don't know if that's just me, really, honestly, I don't know. But back to the wear test, it did a great job. Yes, I saw tiny, tiny flaking. I have high magnification mirrors, which are terrifying to look at sometimes. I do it for you. I do this, I do this for you. It wasn't perfect, but it certainly was not negative. Overall, it received a four out of five on the scorecard. Like I just had a hair in my mouth, it's gross. Which brings me to the final score of 12 out of 20. Eh. Eh. Now it's time for the final verdict. It's like the best part of the whole thing, right? Well, for me, I love this part. <laughs> would I buy this again? Would I recommend it to my friend? No, unfortunately, I wouldn't. It's a hefty price to pay for something that I'm not in love with. These are the things that happen over here in the test kitchen. I'm still a fan of the feathery volume. I did see that again. Really, it all boils down to that brush. I'm just not a fan of it. Some people may love it. I just did it, and for that reason, I'm not going to be buying it again, which bums me out because this was one of my top mascaras for quite a while. What would I buy instead? Very solid question. I actually have this already ready already. It's called Brit's Picks. If you don't know about it, at this point, if you're a subscriber, thank you again, you already know. But it's back on the site. I have it for spring and summer. I will be updating that soon. Check out the mascaras anyway right now. They will give you a good starting point. There is a mascaras playlist over here here too. If you want to grab some popcorn, maybe a glass of wine, you can watch that and check out all the other mascaras because there's, there's many and a lot of new ones too. So that's what I thought. That's what the scorecard said. What do you think? Have you tried this mascara with the new brush and the one? Are you loving it? Do you like it? Because I want to know more about that. Let me know in the comments below. Thank you so much for watching this one. If you hung around to the end, Good for you because I just wanted to tell you two things. They're kind of exciting. First thing, I finally nailed it when it comes to marking off what I'm wearing during these videos because I always get those questions or I haven't lately, but sometimes I get the questions and I just want to have answers for you. Now I do. I figured it out. 600 videos later, I got it. Yay. It's down in the description below. The other note, if you need help finding something, I have two options for you to work one-on-one -on -one with me. They are located back on the website. The link to that page is below. I try to keep it super short, super sweet, and very approachable in price point because I'm just considering what everybody's going through right now. If you just, you know, you just need some help. I have some options available to you now and I'm very excited about them. And thank you one more time for watching. If you found this video helpful, hit that like button if you haven't already. Share it with a friend who's going through their clean beauty journey. I'm gonna go test out some more products over here. I'll see you right back here real soon. Until then, bye.